Use the table of data below and find the chi-squared test stat that will be used to test the claim that rho for group A is 0.25, rho for group B is 10%, rho for group C is 60%, rho for group D is 5%. So one thing you'll notice is, of course, these percentages add up to 100% because we only have four categories. So if the percentages are going to be uh, given to us separately, the total has to always be 100%. So 60 and 10 makes 70. Then that's, of course, uh, 95. And then five more makes 100. OK, so there is our table of data. We have our probabilities provided under the null hypothesis. At this point, what we want to do is to come up with the formula for the chi-squared test stat. So, as we saw in the last video, the chi-squared test stat is observed minus expected divided by expected, then parenthesis here, parenthesis here, square the top of the fraction, and then sum up all of that because we're going to have several cells where we'll have an observed minus expected divided by expected, right? In this case, we have four cells, so we'd actually have the summation going from the first cell to the fourth cell. And then there'll be little i subscripts here just to say the expectation and the observations for each cell. All right, so we talked about this formula in the last video, so I'm not going to go over it in detail again here. But one thing I do want to say is that the expectations, remember, those EIs are equal to n times p sub i. And before we saw that the p's were all the same because we just had the statement that said all the probabilities were equal or all the proportions were equal to one another. Here we have several different proportions. So in other words, for each separate little cell, we're going to plug in the specific probability to get the expected value. So let's do our columns like we did before. So we'll have observations first. Let's list the numbers in there. So we have 140, we have 80, we have 250 and we have 30. So those are our observed values. Now, next to that, we want to do the expected values. Now, when we get the expected values, here's where we're going to do the multiplication by n for each of the pi's that we have. So let's first get the n. The n is found by summing up the observation column. So we have 140 plus 80 plus 250 plus 30. And when you do that, you get a sum of 500. So our total here is going to be 500. Okay, so now that we have that as our n, now we can finish the rest of the problem by simply doing the n times pi. So it would be 500 times 25% for a. So 500 times 25%. So we'll do 500 times 0.25. Okay, then we'll have for the next one, 500 times 0.10. All right, that's for category B. And then we'll have for category C, 500 times 0.60. And then lastly, 500 times 0 0.05, 0 0.05. OK. Now, we didn't talk about this much in the last one, but we should talk about it here. It's important that when we do this calculation that we run a little check as we do it. We want to make sure that all of these expectations exceed 5. They have to be, not exceed 5, but have to be 5 or greater, I should say. So they can be 5 or higher, but they can't be less than that. If they're less than that, then the chi-squared test is inappropriate. It means we don't meet the assumptions for the test. Because we have an assumption that the expected value column has only values that are 5 or larger in it. OK, well, let's work that out and see. Looks like we're going to be fine, but let's just make sure by doing all these expectations. So. 5 times 0.25, or 500 divided by 4, would be the same answer, and we get 125. Then, of course, we have 10% of 500, that's 50. Then we have 500 times 0.6, it's going to be the 300. And then we have 5% 5 of uh, 500, so we'll have 0 0.05 times our 500, which will give us 25. Okay, so there's our answers. We have our expected values now, right? Expected values. All right, good, so we have those. Now we do our next column, which is gonna be the observations minus the expectations, right? So let's do that next. Okay, so we're just gonna do all the subtraction straight across, right? So 140 minus 125 gets 15, you know, so on and so forth. 80 minus 50 is 30. Uh, 250 minus 300 is negative 50. The negatives aren't so important because we are going to square them later, right? And 30 minus 25 is 5. Okay, then from there we're going to do our 
observed minus expected quantity squared. Okay, so we square each value in this column, right? So for example, 15 squared is 225, 30 squared is 900, uh, 50 squared is 2500, 5 squared is 25. And of course, you could type all this in your calculator as well, right? And there are ways to, with a graphing calculator to do this um, faster as well. And um, I'll show that in other videos, how to use the graphing calculator to solve problems much quicker. That's an, it'd be another section of the website, though. All right, so observe minus expected squared divided by the expected values now. So the final step of the process is observe minus expected quantity squared, that column that we just had, but divided by the expectations, right? And this is the important column that gives us our test stat ultimately, because we sum up this column for our solution. So down here is where we're going to get our answer from. This is going to be the summation of the observed minus expected quantity squared over the expectation, which is the same as our chi-squared test staff. Okay, so let's finish this by doing this last column and then we'll be done. All right, so for each one, we have to do this column divided by E. So in this case, it would be 225 divided by 125, right? 225 divided by 125, for example, right? So on and so forth. Then we'll do uh, 900 divided by 50. Then we'll have 2,500 divided by 300. And then finally, 25 divided by 25. All right, let's work this out then. So, of course, we'll have 225 divided by 125 for the first cell. It gives us 1.8. Then we'll have 900 divided by 50, which will be 18. Then we'll have 2,500, 2,500 divided by 300. Get the answer 8.3 repeating. And lastly, 25 divided by 25, which of course is 1. All right, let's add all these together now in our calculator. So we'll have 1.8 added to 18 added to 8. Point three repeating added to one. And when we're done, we get the answer 29.13 repeating. All right, so that's basically our chi squared test stat then 29.13 repeating. In this case, we were dealing with expectations that involve um, specific probabilities provided to us in HL. In the video before, we dealt with a scenario where they were all supposed to be equal. But you can see that both problems are pretty straightforward, pretty simple. It's just a lot of work to calculate all these columns to get our final answer for the test step.